You've got data in more than one table in your database, but you want the data in a single result instead of two queries. I'll show you how to do that in this video. Here is the scenario. You've got two tables in your SQL database. In this example, we have a customer table and an account status table. I'm using MySQL in this video, but the concept works for any SQL vendor. We have two select statements here, one for the customer table and the other for the account status table. We run them and we get two separate results. But we want to get a single result with the data combined. This means we want to see the customer details and instead of a number that indicates the status, we want to see the actual status value, such as active or cancelled. That's the whole point of putting your data in a database, right? You want to see it in the way you want, not in separate results. How can we do this? Here is the design of our two tables. They are related using a very common concept in relational databases, which is a primary key and a foreign key. The account status has a primary key here, called ID. This is a column that represents a unique identifier for the record. The customer table has something called a foreign key. This is the status ID column, and it represents the primary key column in the account status table. It stores the ID value of the related account status row. We saw these ID values earlier in the video when we ran the select query on the customer table. So we have these two ID values. How can we use them in a single query? We use an SQL concept called a join. This is a concept that lets us connect the two tables together using a column that is the same in both tables. And we have that in both tables, our status ID column. We can write a select query and use a join to combine data from two tables. Let's do that now. We start by writing a select keyword. Then we'll select some columns from our customer table, just like the earlier query. We'll select the customer ID, F name, email, company, and status ID. Now we need to specify the table that these columns come from. So we add the from keyword, then the customer table. Next, we add our second table, the account status table. We do this by using that join concept I mentioned earlier. To actually add this to our query, we add the words in a join after the name of our table which is customer in this example. Then we add the name of our other table, which is account status. Next, we need to specify how these two tables are related. Earlier, we saw that there is a column in each table that stores the same piece of information. In the customer table, it is the status ID, and in the account status table, it is the ID column. The column names don't have to be the same, and often they won't be. They just need to store the same piece of information. So we have these two columns. We add these columns to our query after the account status table. We say on, then the customer.statusID column, then equals, then the account status.id column. We have now joined our two tables together. There's one more thing to do, and that is to add the columns from the account status table into our select clause. This is so we can see the values from that table. So we add the status value column into the select clause. Our query is now ready. Let's run it. We run this query, but we get an error. In the output panel, we can see the query we ran, and in the response column, it shows the error message. It says, error code 1052, column ID in field list is ambiguous. What does this mean, and why did we get this error? Well, the word ambiguous means unclear or undecided. And this error means that the database is not clear where the ID column comes from. We are selecting the ID column in our select clause, which we want to get from the customer table, but the database has also found an ID column in the account status table. If we look at the table list on the left here, we can click on each of the table names to see the columns. Both the customer table and the account status table have an ID column. If you're using a different SQL editor, your sidebar will look a little different, but you should still be able to expand the database objects and see the columns in the tables. We have the ID column in two tables. How do we resolve this error? We need to tell the database that when we want to see the ID column, we mean the ID column in the customer table. And to do this, we do something called qualifying the column names. This means we add the table name and a period before the column name. So in the select clause, we say customer, then dot, then ID. This will tell the database which table we want to get the data from. Let's try to run the query now. Success! We run the query and see the results here. 
we can see the customer records and the columns from the customer table. We can also see the status value from the account status table. So instead of just seeing the status ID, which was numbers like one or three, we can see the actual status value for each customer. This concept is very useful when working with databases as it allows you to store data in one place, in a separate table, and still get the data that you want to show. Now in the select query, we added the customer table name, then a dot before the ID column. We could leave it the way it is, but I would suggest that if we're adding the table name to one column, then we should add it to all columns. This is so the select clause is consistent and to make it more readable in my opinion. We add the customer to all of the columns except the status value, which comes from the account status table. Let's run the query. We run it and see the results here, which are the same as before. So that didn't change the results or break the query, but I feel it's a good thing to do. You also don't need to show every column. For example, we are showing the status ID column here. Now that we are showing the status value, maybe we don't need to see the ID. We can remove this column from our results by removing it from the select clause. Then we run the query again. We see the same rows, but we don't see that status ID column. We can still see the status value. The query works even though we don't show the status ID. We have used the join keyword to relate those two tables together and choose what we want to see in these tables. You might be looking at this result and wonder why some records are missing or not showing. What happened to customer ID 7? Why are there no records for the status of pending? These records were in the customer table and the account status table, but they are not showing here. Why is that? You'll want to watch this next video where I explain why this happens and a simple tweak to the query to show this data. Thanks for watching.